So I did a thing. I printed out a duct for a 5015 fan and it works amazing. So much so that I decided to make another and put it on my other SVO sticks. This was a learning experience for me and I want to share my build and my current clipper and slicer convig settings with everyone. It has taken me a while to get to this point and I hope my experience today will save someone frustration tomorrow. Clipper has been one of those projects that continues to be a learning experience. Switching from Marlin to Clipper made me realize just how much I needed to learn as I saw the quality of my prints go from amazing to mediocre. I knew the printer could do it, but I just didn't exactly know how to get there without a lot of reading and trial and error. Just when I thought I had it dialed in, I would try new filaments that would prove me wrong. The real light bulb moment came when I was printing a Benji and I realized that the biggest issue I had been battling was cooling. Even with the fan at 100%, I couldn't get the parts cooled enough to get a satisfactory print. This was really limiting my ability to utilize different brands, so I thought, why not try one of these 5015 fans? I scoured printables and the duct I liked the best was designed by Leander Blanco. He has a couple of different designs that seem well thought out. I'll leave the link in the description. So I decided on my part and I was like, okay, this is great. I'm going to print it out. But what I had on the left duct was a lot of deformations. There are holes in it. Um, the layers weren't connecting well there. It looked absolutely horrible. And I couldn't figure out exactly what was going on. I went into Tinkercad. I tried to fix it there. Um, but as you can see right there, when I started examining the slice, I started seeing these errors and I didn't know what was causing them. So on the off chance, I decided to go from Arachne um, to Classic on the perimeter generator. And that actually resolved the issue for me. And it wasn't as com complex of a resolution as I initially thought it was going to be, which is always nice when you have a victory like that. It, it, it gives you that feel good moment. And at that part, I was like, okay, I'm gonna get this printed and we're gonna move on uh, to getting this thing assembled. After several filled prints, I finally got a really nice workable print. And I was really happy with it. Um, but one of the things that I noticed when I was going to put the, the guide onto the back of this uh, air duct was that um, the screw fitness was really tight. So what I ended up doing was I tapped those holes with the M3 screw, which just makes the process go so much more smooth. And then what I did was, because I really wanted a nice uh, airtight fit between the guide and the duct, is that I ended up taking some of this Gorilla Glue and just putting it all over the back of this guide. And my goal here was to just strengthen the whole fitness between the two parts. I wanted it to be not just held in by the screw, but I also wanted to close up any of the air gaps that might be there. And I've done this on two of them so far and I haven't had any issues. And it seems to work pretty good. Um, so once I get this tightened down, one of the things I want to do is make sure that the ends of the screws are basically flush with the surface there. And I, and I feel that that's exactly where they need to be for that tight fit that you want. And then uh, once they're tightened, what I like to do is just basically, you know, go around the edges a little bit and make sure that there's a good seal all the way around that I can see a little bit of that, you know, Gorilla Glue popping out. So this part right here, um, on prepping the fan, this is probably one of the most obnoxious parts of the whole thing, at least for me, because I'm using the JST125 uh, connectors. I decided not to mutilate the fan. Uh, what I d end ended up doing was just cutting down that wire, shortening it up a little bit, and then uh, putting some JST125 connectors on. But 
they're so small I have to use this uh, magnifying glass just to actually see what I'm doing. It's crazy intense. Um, it seems like every time I do it, I get a little better. At it. I was pretty happy with the way it turned out. I opted not to record it because it's such fine detail work and my camera just isn't all that awesome. But, you know, thinking about it, you know, hindsight, if I didn't have all the connectors and the crimping tool, I probably would have just bought some pre-made cables and just, you know, soldered them into it. I, I, I honestly think that probably would have been a little faster. But uh, what I normally do is once I, you know, check the fit and stuff, I also like to make sure that, okay, the cable's going to reach and everything's going to be great. So let's go get this fitted onto the printer. Okay, so basically at this point, um, we have to take off the original 4010 fan. It's held on uh, to this plate right here as these little guys holding it. I used a uh, 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench to remove them. And then I used a 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench to remove the screws to this fan right here, the 4010. Okay. Okay, so before I connect everything up, I want to test to see if it's working or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically start up the parts fan and we can see if it, the blower turns on. So what we're going to do, and put my hand here and I can feel the air come out. So I know it's wired correct polarity, everything's good. So I'm going to shut off the parts fan and then I'm going to shut down the printer. This is probably the most relaxed part of the install process. Basically, you just remove the four outer screws and you leave the two in the middle. That way the bearing closure doesn't uh, fall apart. And then you put your fan duct up there and you install those M3x20 countersunk screws in and make sure that it's tight enough to stay on but not so tight that you end up cracking or breaking the plastic. So this is actually my second attempt to get the fan working because the first time the JST connector, um, one of the wires came loose. And one of the main things is that the JST uh, 1.25 connectors are really designed for a smaller gauge wire. While they work on this, we're pretty much at the limits of you know that connector with this particular gauge. Hence why I say it might be better to just get the, the JST 1.25 connectors already connected to the wire and just splice it in might be I, I honestly think it might be a little nicer of a connector than how I did it uh, the second thing is you know if you got to perform maintenance on this with that silicon sock um, to remove it there's not a lot of room there so you may have to take off that duct um, and the, the, the same thing goes with the fan replacement you know the the fan duct sits right underneath the JST 125 connector not a lot of room there so getting that connector in there you might need to use some tweezers or um, remove the duct it's up to you whatever works okay I got everything hooked up Put the heat shrink going and let's see if we can yep that's blowing that's good we got it we got a good parts cooling fan good now the only thing left of that is the PID tune it I'll show you how to do that in one of my clipper videos um, but that's it all I have to do. I'll be pretty 